Kyle, at some point in this movie, uh, I was really disappointed that nobody said, we need to hack the plane frame. A main frame, but on a plane. Like the plane frame. A hack. That is by far the dumbest answer you could have possibly given. <laughs> and everybody who's witnessing this video Fuck right you. now is... Fuck you, Kyle. Fuck you. Gotten dumber. Fuck. I'm, cut, <laughs> I'm editing this. I'm cutting it right now. <laughs> Hello, welcome back to the 120th episode of Good Matter Man Man, the show where we watch terrible movies to tell you if you should too. I'm your host, Mr. Brian Shilligo, joined as always by the other host, Mr. Kyle Hinton. Kyle, uh, this was a patron recommendation. Yes. Uh, the film is the 2001, uh, but it came out in 2003 <laughs> for, I think, very obvious reasons, which we'll yeah. discuss. Um, <laughs> air it's panic. Called, yeah, air panic. <laughs> I'm just gonna get this out of the way right now. The reason that this was delayed is because a major part of this movie was flying a plane into stuff. Yeah, in the opening, the cold open of this movie is a passenger jet flying into a, a skyscraper building. in Denver. Yes, in this uh, and exploding. So uh, yeah, that that they they were in post production. I guarantee you, they're editing it. And then 9/11 happened. They were like, shit. <laughs> Real bad timing. Uh, so it ended up, according to IMDb, coming out in 2003. They waited a couple, shelved it for a couple of years. Yeah. I don't know if it came out in theaters or not. Um, but the opening credits for this, uh, uh, the first of the production logo is New Image, which yes, is which, always a good sign. Yeah, we've, <laughs> done, we've done a few New Image films. Yeah, always a good sign. Uh, as opposed to uh, last week's um, uh, Safe House, this one has... Very poor reviews. It has a 3.6 out of 10 on IMDb and an 11% uh, audience score on Rotten Tomatoes. It's something else. So the cold open for this movie, like I said, is a passenger jet flying, uh, and then they're coming down through the clouds, and then they get out of the clouds, and the guy just yells, where the hell's the runway? What the hell? Where's the runway? Uh, because they, have, they don't know what's going on. Yeah. That shit's going nuts. Like their uh, navigation have, system is not responding. Nothing's responding. Nothing's working. Oh, we're also introduced to this character who will immediately die. Who's in his office worker guy who's yeah. in front of a green screen <laughs> right. window. It's so bad. It's so bad. <laughs> and you're wondering, you're like, why is he in front of a green screen yeah, window? Yeah, giant green screen It'll window. It'll make sense in It'll a second. It'll make sense in a second, yeah. Uh, and so he's he's there in his, in his office. Um, and then they're there. And also, it made no sense. They're like, where the hell's the runway when they get through the clouds? But he said they were going to... Well, immediately he's also like, oh, there it is. Where's the runway? I got it. Yeah. Oh, we're off course, though. But he's also like, I'm going to... He tells everybody on the plane, I'm going to turn on the buckle seatbelt thing here in a few minutes. Uh, we're going to be beginning our approach. Folks, we've turned on the fasten the seatbelt sign and we've started our descent into Denver. And then he gets through the clouds. He's like, where's the runway? If he could, if the runway was where he expected it to be, they'd be landing like immediately. Mm -hmm. He would have already had to turn the seatbelt light on i don't they're uh, still doing drinks they were still yeah. doing drink uh, whatever doesn't fucking matter um yeah. uh, because they can't control the plane not only is it like their instruments are all fucked up they can't do anything like the plane is flying itself and they're mm. like what the what the fuck's going on uh and it and it crashes into that guy's office so we get to see <laughs> the plane through his green screen window uh yeah. and he turns around just in time for the plane to crash into oh. the fucking <laughs> office building And I was like, oh boy, oh boy. And then we cut to Chicago, Chicago, the FAA, mm -hmm. whatever headquarters. And I love the opening line by this guy is based upon the rising toll of dead and injured, not to mention the property damage. This is hands down the worst disaster in aviation history. And I was like, oh man, they wrote Whoa. that line. Oh, hey, no. <laughs> I was like, God, go, go. By the way, did you see who that actor was? Yeah, he's uh, the mission director in Contact. David, we're not seeing anything abnormal down here. No good. Hold the sequence. I've got to take a direct reading. What the hell is he talking about? He's like one of the head guys in contact. He, he's a great actor, and he does a good job mm -hmm. in this movie. He has a lot of gravitas. Like, he fucking commands a room really yeah. well. But now here's what the FAA knows. Flight 1055 stopped responding to air traffic controls approximately one hour before it crashed. 
Uh, so they're, they're having this emergency meeting at the FAA. And this is where we're introduced to Neil. <laughs> By the way. Look, the operative phrase for you two is seen and not heard. Got it? Right. Put on some pants, Neil. For God's sake, lose the earring. By the way, there's one actor in this meeting, the mustache dude. Oh, yeah. Who, his response to every... Terrible. Unbelievably bad actor. And it's like ADR, I think. Yeah. It's really yeah. bad. What about those first two crashes? Any similar mechanical failures? The FBI's computer crime unit doesn't think so. He's, he's the guy who's standing up and talking like this on everything. Yes. Guys, we need to figure out what's bringing down these planes. He, he turns to them and he's like, what the FBI needs from the FAA is technical analysis, not these conspiracy theories and intellectual <laughs> bullshit. <laughs> what the FBI needs from the FAA is technical analysis. Not these conspiracy theories and intellectual bullshit. And it's delivered about that convincingly. <laughs> like, it's so bad. Oh, boy. Um, But we're introduced to Neil, who works for the FAA, but he's not like the other FAA guys. He wears shorts to the board meetings. Yeah, and he's got it on the front pack. He's got the front, yeah, that, that early 2000s front, like, I'm a bike messenger backpack thing. Uh, it's great. Um, and he explains that uh, even though... So there's a head of the FBI or something there wearing a Hawaiian shirt who's like, Red Dawn claimed <laughs> responsibility. I, I honestly thought that was Craig T. Nelson at first. It kind of looks like Craig It kind of sounds like him a little yeah. bit, too. My right-hand man spent two years with Red Dawn, but maybe, just maybe, you know more than he does. Yeah, uh, but he's like, Red Dawn claimed responsibility, and Neil's like, it's not Red Dawn. They don't have the cape technical capabilities he's like this is a new breed of hacker terror i was about ready to say first off when did you become an expert on international terrorism <laughs> he's neil breen i mean whatever his name is exactly <laughs> i think we're dealing with a whole new breed of terrorist here a computer hacker i controlled access to the national geospatial intelligence agency i control access to anything and everything even from my little, simple, brilliant setup. Cut the computer. Shut it down. I'm trying. I can't. I control access to anything and everything. Um, All he was missing was a black tank top. Yeah. He goes, uh, I think we're dealing with a whole new breed of terrorist here. A computer hacker. <laughs> That ass. scene, that 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 it's line, so that line feels like it was lifted directly from hackers. Yes. They're hackers. Hackers penetrate and ravage private and publicly owned computer systems. Hack the planet. Hack the planet. I, again, and this movie was originally slated to come out in 2001. This is you. Th that line makes sense in like the 80s or 90s. When people didn't know computers. Yeah, in 2000, yeah. in the 2000s, it's like yo, hackers are a thing. Like we already know that this is, mm -hmm. is a thing. Each one had a flight computer retrofitted with the new Oxelis chip, which drains unprecedented amount of control from the pilot to the computer. That's the same chip that prevented 2332 from ditching last year. He explains that he thinks somebody hacked in to the mainframe of the company that produced these chips. How well do you think that's getting picked up? That's not. These, these are good microphones. <laughs> they don't. Ryan has very considerate neighbors. It's, it's somebody driving down the street. That's a heavy truck. Yeah, well, that somebody has a, like a diesel truck. Oh, that's a delivery truck. Oh, okay. It was like a deli delivery truck. Anyways, thanks for sidetracking us. <laughs> <laughs> so he explains that the bad guy must have hacked into the mainframe of the company that makes the chips that's on these airplanes. Yeah. That rerouted hundreds of planes this year alone around dangerous weather. And which was manufactured by a company with the most lax security imaginable. I mean, I'm talking a 12-year-old could hack it. Son, I don't know what you've been smoking. But like they were saying, like the, the computers are isolated. Like there's there's no real way. Once they're in the air, yeah. you can't hack into the plane. And this guy's like, but if he got them before they got into the air, he could then control them from anywhere. This guy hacks into the mainframe of the company that makes the chip, okay? Then alters the programming on the chip itself, telling it to link up to him once it's in the air. Which, by the way, not to count too much bullshit on that but it's like wirelessly controlling something that far away and uh, i have no idea especially not at this time it seems very yeah i mean unlikely. it's thirty two thousand feet in the air yeah or or i don't know maybe it maybe ten thousand twelve thousand yeah yeah gotta, usually uh, but yeah but depending like on the, the signal length is just gonna get too long at that point whatever okay we're done <laughs> we're, uh, we're done me trying to explain that <laughs> or me trying to make sense of it <laughs> I just know the farther away you get from the source of between two objects, the wider the, the length of the wave goes and the less control you would have. Mm -hmm. Less connection.
Sure. I, yeah, I don't, I'm no disagree. I think it's probably very unlikely that this <laughs> plot of this movie is particularly it's just realistic. funnier that I know that uh, I, I could potentially be wrong. <laughs> yeah, I just like when you talk about things that you don't know enough about <laughs> and just hang yourself. I understand how fucking wireless <laughs> connections work, at least. Okay. I know they have limitations. Okay. Everybody let them know in the comments whether or not. That's why you can't get a fucking cellular <laughs> signal while you're in a plane. You actually can, depending on where. Yeah. Sure. How high you are, I guess. Anyways. <laughs> introduced to and i don't even know her name because it's christa it's blood rain i called her blood rain the whole time it's christana loken <laughs> yeah. uh she's like our main fee the female lead in this movie um she's I'm, gonna be making great uh decisions as an actress on her next project from from now here on out it's like this and blood rain and black rose which was the one we did <laughs> yeah. that she was in la conoces es yasenia trabajo para mi ha sido un milagro Ha recuperado la memoria. But she's uh, she's uh, uh, an air hostess or uh, whatever, and she this is her last this is her last day on the job. <laughs> she's going she's she's only go two days from retirement, company. making hip hop clothing. So um, tell me those um, hippity hoppity clothes you're going to be selling. In... <laughs> it's hip hop. <laughs> right. Um, those are those ridiculous clothes that my nieces and nephews love and I hate. Right. Right. That's why I'm going to give them a big discount. <laughs> Is what they say? Uh, hip hop clothing that my my uh, what my my nieces and nephews wear. Because, sure. Okay. It's yep. a weird point to include, Thank but you, sure, Captain. Um. So that this, but this is their last flight, and it's a red eye flight from somewhere. Besides, it's a holiday red eye. Piece of cake. Exactly what I planned. Hardly any passengers, and most of them asleep. Milwaukee. What does red eye mean? It doesn't mean like overnight, like a okay. like late night. Is what that's called. I don't know why it's called that, but maybe because like you're tired and you're yeah. you got red in your I don't know. I am the smartest man alive. <laughs> the, apparently they did it, like the the it was from Milwaukee to Washington, right? To DC, yeah. Yeah. Look, this flight's been rerouted. Two a.m. departure. It's going from Milwaukee to Washington DC. And apparently, the, the, I guess wherever time they are or whatever flight whatever company they're using was like, all right, this seems like a good time for a flight to have an in-flight meal. Do they have an in-flight yes. meal? No, well, no, they don't. It wasn't served, but there's one scene where they dipping down where all the trays are flying all over the place. Oh yeah. I guess it could have just been on the plane. Cause maybe it's next flight. Maybe. I don't know. But then they would, who knows? I don't fucking know anything about how planes work. <laughs> Kyle, I'm not even going to pretend I do. <laughs> the only time I've ever had an in-flight meal was in an international <clears throat> flight in, uh, it was not great. <laughs> I mean, anything over, yeah, I think like four hours you'll probably get, mm. which in general that's international because you can get from most places in the U.S., I think, within yeah. four or five hours. Um, I could be wrong about that because I don't fly that much. L.A. to Boston maybe? I don't know. Yeah, like the, going coast to coast might be the longest, but even then it's probably not more than like five or six hours, I would think. I bet it's not that long. You might get a meal. I am the smartest man alive! <laughs> it also depends on which way you're going. Earth rotation and all that. Yeah, that's true. Wait, you're wait, Kyle. You think the Earth's a globe? Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> it is a disc on a fucking turtle's back. And hang on, hang on. And context warning for flat Earth theory. <laughs> Damn it! How the hell did we get that? YouTube is on their game today. Um. If he's holding it up at 23 feet high and we're seeing the light, well, that's because the Earth's curved. So I, I should only be able to see it when it's at 17 feet. There's, we don't see you, Enrique. Lift up your, lift up your light uh, way above your head. Interesting. Uh, for some reason, Neil assumes that th that obviously this the, the terrorist is going to hit this this Fourth of July flight <laughs> yes. to DC. It's the perfect opportunity. Yeah. And to there's like, like three flights that have that chipset, and he just was like, he's got to go for whatever one. And he's like, well, it's going to DC. So if they're going to make a terrorist threat, it's got to be against like the government or something. Yeah. It's going to D.C. on the 4th of July. Shh. 
He wants spectacular. That's the one. So he gets on his motorcycle, which he's a badass <laughs> who drives a motorcycle, Kyle. I like how he, he drives from, from Chicago, Chicago to, to Milwaukee. Milwaukee on this motorcycle, yeah. hauling ass. On the hauling street. ass. And get, shows up at the airport right as the plane is yeah. leaving. Like, he gets there right as the fucking plane is leaving. But, um, uh, they're, they're, they are trying to ground the plane, but then lose control. Why are we moving? I don't have a clue. Just engage autopilot? I never turned it on. And they're like, we can't stop. And it's like swerving in and out of the, like fucking traffic on the tarmac mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Um, oh, and the, the CGI planes. Oh, this is the CGI. We get nonstop CG planes yep. for the rest of this fucking yep. movie. Uh, I do appreciate that they at least tried and they don't reuse the same like three shots of the plane in the air over and over again. Mm -hmm. um, but it's real bad. The, 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 the shots of the airport the CG airport that they've made are it's just so like small. black. It, yeah. And it's like, you can't, there's no details it at all. It looks incredibly tiny because there's no like depth of field. Yeah. In it. And there's no, there's no details. They're like, it's nighttime. You can't see anything. We'll just put lights, but it looks, you can still tell that there's nothing there. It looks like an incomplete rendering of the fucking airport yeah. or something like that. Um, but the, the plane's going to take off. It's taking off. We need to get out to that plane. This way. Let's go. And then him and that guy, the security guy that stopped him, Go down. He's like, I gotta get on that plane. Yeah, they, they have like a a ladder. It's car. a ladder truck, ladder I truck? guess, for something. I Whatever. Don't know. He gets on it and he's trying to get on this plane, which I, I guess they they're able to open up the doors at least on it. That's mechanical enough to where it doesn't require electronics. Yeah, yeah. I guess you can just pull open. I guess she's able to open the rear hatch. Yeah. And the pilot realizes, like, oh, I bet that guy wants to get on the plane. Why don't you go open the back door for him? It's like, what? <laughs> and be aware of a ground vehicle under your tail. That must be that FAA guy trying to get on. Josie, go back and open the rear hatch. Why would you assume what? that? Okay. I, I sure. also like how the airport security dude who's driving the, the ladder truck is like, you know, if we get behind those engines, we're it's just, fucking we're, dead. Yeah, it's just going to cook us. Yeah. If we fall behind those engines, the jet blast will kill us. So do it, do it, do it. He's like, do it anyways. He's like, all right. <laughs> and for his trouble, this fucking airport security guard gets fucking flipped over. Yeah, he gets ragged off. Destroyed in the fucking... I mean, he, we don't know if he could have died. We have no idea. Yeah. We never see him the rest of the movie. In the arms of the angel. His car just flips over, but he yeah. gets onto the Neil plane. Neil gets on the plane. Great. And then we also get uh, introduced to all the passengers. This felt very much like airpl uh, airport, like whatever was it, the nineteen seventies film or something like that. You mean airplane? Well, there's or... airplane, but, well, airplane but that was is the a scoop of airport. airport, right? Yeah, yeah. With the uh, I've never seen name? airports. So George Kennedy, I think that's it. Anyways, I'll take your word for it. Yeah, yeah, but you have all these people. It's a survival film. It's like yeah, it's, yeah. It's you like get Poseidon introduced to like a fun this. cast of characters yeah. who all have their own thing. We have like. Uh, the one guy who's in business class who has a history with one of the stewardesses, like they went to high school together and had mm -hmm. a falling out. It's been a long time. Sure has, Max, since high school. And you know, my tooth is still chipped when you hit me. You deserved it. That's debatable. Would you like a pre-flight beverage? No. We have uh, the family, the the, the doctor uh, with his family who they're like, they have like some family tension because he doesn't pay enough attention to the son and yeah. like because he's always working kind of thing. Uh, the actress. The actress who we eventually find out is a soap opera star. Yeah, we have this like fun wild. Oh, we have the business guy who's who has to be on the flight. Yeah, yeah he's, he's, he's terrified, he's, he's, he's of, terrified flying. of flying. Uh, Bus told me it was the DC trip or my job. It's the only reason I'm here. I hate to fly. Yeah. So they they Boy, got. Did, did he pick the wrong one? <laughs> <laughs> uh, the woman who's made of glass. <laughs> oh yeah, who breaks like every bone in her body? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Zoe Michaels. Yeah, yeah, I'm Zoe. Uh, and I love too. It was one of the shots after he gets on the plane. Um, we see a shot from the front of the plane going down the runway, about to take off, and the CG on the cockpit is not stabilized correctly. Or I don't know what's. <laughs> it's like bouncing around. There, it yeah. looks so fucking bad. <laughs> And then I love, so now they're, they're, they're flying, they're getting up in the air, and the hacker's, like, taking over control, and we see him. We get shots of him flying the plane. He's using, like, a $20 a joy joystick. Yeah, a joy <laughs> I control the horizontal. I control the vertical. Not even 
like a good you know not, not one of those like three hundred dollar like I fly flight simulator yeah, joysticks yeah. like a twenty dollar I'm gonna play fucking tank commander joystick. Uh, excuse me, war uh, shit what was it war machines? Oh yeah, yeah. well no, that I know what you're talking Mech about Mech Warrior. That's Mech it. War oh, is that there we go. go. Mech Warrior is a game that I definitely had a joystick for. Well yeah, I, yes. I, I'm just saying he doesn't even have a good joystick by video game standards. No, he no. has a shit it, joystick. It's, it's not even Logitech. It's like off-brand Logitech. It's, yeah, it's like the cheapest joystick they could find, and it's again he's flying a fucking 747 with it or whatever. It's like okay, man. Yeah, you're right. It's as simple as down, up, left, right. That's all. You I, need. I will say, even for economy, even for coach. The amount of space they had on those so planes. much leg room. Oh my god, it was amazing. <laughs> yeah, God, can you imagine if we still had like that amount of spacing in current planes? Yeah, oh, it'd be a fucking dream. Ugh. So this shit's really hit the fan. Everybody's freaking out. Um, and uh, I don't. I think at this point, the uh, oh yeah, the pilot came back to talk to everybody. And while he was talking to him, the uh, <laughs> 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 the guy nose dived it, and and our uh, the pilot fucking ate one, took a header, <laughs> and now he's paralyzed, but only temporarily. temporarily which yeah. I guess that's a thing. It, I don't know. I guess like it would be like uh, swelling. Like he says, he has like a cerebral uh, concussion. Definite cerebral concussion. Although I don't think he's permanently paralyzed. Is what he says. Something like that, which I think is redundant, but because yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you can have a concussion. Not. I don't yeah. know. Whatever. But <laughs> that is what he says. I have a non-central nervous system concussion. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what? The, the doctor does say, I believe, a cerebral concussion, and he's temporarily paralyzed. Yeah. I think it would make more sense. And this is my little medical history. I know this much at least. <laughs> is uh, you'd have, like, the joints in your neck swell up, and it would cause pressure on the That may be what cord. it was. That may be, maybe that's what they were going for. Because he is he has a neck brace on, he's temporarily paralyzed. Well, he's unconscious for the first half, and then for the second half he wakes up, but he's he's paralyzed. Mm -hmm. I love, so Ed, now the pilot's been knocked out, and they, they take care of that, and then Neil comes back to talk to everybody in coach, and he walks through the door, and he's like, all right, everybody, listen up. And the one terrified guy's like, like who the fuck are you? Can, can I have your attention, please? Listen. Who the fuck are you? <laughs> and it was my favorite line because it was so realistic. I was like, yes, that absolutely. If some guy just walks in and is like, everybody listen up. The guy's like, who the fuck are you? <laughs> Why the fuck am I listening the, the, to you? The, the, the level of freak out this guy has <laughs> is amazing. Who the fuck are you? Crashing. Are you God damn it! No, no, just... He had the most fun in this whole movie, the guy playing this role. He's just losing his mind <laughs> constantly. Yes. Like, completely losing his mind. It's incredible. I gotta get off. I have to get off. I have to get off. He's gonna kill us. And then our guy goes, he's like, oh, we're gonna get the plane back. And he goes back up and he pulls out. He's got his little, in his, his little delivery bag. Yeah, he's, he's got, got his dope-ass little bitty laptop. His little Chromebook <laughs> or whatever. Uh, that has an incredibly um, high-def uh, <laughs> webcam on it that yeah. he's able to call. He calls uh, the FAA on his little, on Skype, I guess, or whatever. <laughs> And he and he he talking to them on their camera, and they're like, and I love uh, the 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 head guys like Neil, you broke every rule in the book, but damn, I'm damn, I'm glad you're damn up it, there. Damn it, you made it up there. <laughs> yeah. You broke every rule in the book, but I'm really glad you're up there. So then they're like, all right, we got to figure out who this Kane guy is because they know the guy's name is Kane now. Yes, the, he's popped or, up on the screen once or twice, and he's talked to them. And I love as they're like, we got to work out. Uh, let's um, let's get a profile. That the FBI guy says. Can we get a profile on this guy named Kane? And he's like, What can we conclude about a guy named Kane? First murderer uh, killed his brother. Go, guy, let's go. And I was like, Wait, you're talking about like the yeah. biblical Kane? What does that have to do with. Yeah, that was the Craig T. Nelson what? character. Yeah, what does that have to do with this? Because he's using the name Kane, you think that somehow that is inspired by that? Whatever. I don't know. It sounds like bullshit crime shit but whatever <laughs> listen i'm emailing you a list now of planes that have been into the oxylus group recently for fixes you ground them all what are you talking about oxylus brings in these planes every six months for checks the three planes that crashed and this one were all in the plant a month ago our guy figures out that he had to have been at the plant when the planes were being um the chips that were in these planes were being like had having maintenance done, so yeah. they were able to look like cross reference the list of who was at the working at the plant at that time with something. I don't know, they figure it out somehow. I got him, Wilson Rundle. 
Waiting already. Worked writing code in the Oxylus project. Send him this info. Okay, Neil, the consensus is that this guy's a brilliant coder, but crazy. Their first plan of action in order to uh, solve this whole dilemma where they can't control the plane is that our guy, Neil, is like, guys. I'm just going to rip it out. I have. No, I have. Well, yeah, he first, he's like, we'll just cut all the lines and then we'll control the plane. But then they're like, oh, well, we'll crash or whatever. And he's like, well, how about this? I have a super crazy computer virus just here. This seems like such a dumb idea. On my person, I just yeah. carry around computer viruses. This is a particularly nasty virus. Now, if I can load this on, get his computer occupied, maybe it'll act as a distraction. He's what? a white ha hacker, okay? <laughs> is he? Okay. Uh, he basically shows people that all their weaknesses so he can help protect He them. does not do that, though. No. He's Because that was what I was expecting was going to happen in this movie, was going to be him, like, hack, hack, hack fighting. But that never happens. I was, I was seriously wanting a moment where both of them are, like, in front yeah. of a computer, yeah. opening and closing yes. windows really quick. Yes, that's what I was expecting, <laughs> and we don't get that. Our guy seems actually like he has no idea what he's going to do. He relies on the people on the ground for help, like, the entire time. And I thought it was going to be like he's the only person who could be <laughs> there out. to do this job. And it's like, what? He just cuts wires. Tell me you guys got a plan for this, because... Uh... I'm drawing a blank right now. For the for the record, this is probably the most realistic in regard to how hacking would actually work, because he does like his solution is literally cut it out and then re like just reset it. Sure, I, and I, I and yeah. you don't have a stupid thing like in hackers where they're flying around a fucking main, literally flying around a mainframe. Yeah hacking into shit and being like here's my my mouse code virus for you look at this look at me type look at all these windows opening and closing quick kyle we gotta both use the keyboard at the same time this guy's a pro have you ever seen that clip <laughs> yes, <for NCIS>. God. <laughs> and they're hacking on the same keyboard <laughs> i'm getting hacked a port scan no no this is major they've already burned through the ncis public firewall We'll isolate the node and dump them on the other side of the router. I'm trying. It's moving too fast. <laughs> Best thing ever. <laughs> the people on that show, though, the writers know what they're fucking doing. <laughs> they're doing it for fun. Oh, fuck. Um, so he, he's going to upload this virus, and while the computers are resetting because of the virus, um, they can reassign the landing coordinates to the airport. Because mm. right now the landing coordinates are going to some town. They don't tell us what this town is yet. It's just some town in Maryland near Baltimore. Yeah. What's going on? He's taking you to Calvert Cliffs, Maryland. Our freak out guy is screaming, I got to get out of here. I have to get off. I have to get off. He's going to kill us. I swear to God. He's... And they, they tackle him Hold to on. the ground. Hold on. Oh, yeah. This is where they tie him up. Yeah. yeah, they, yeah. Try, they tie him up. With, they're like, we need your belts. And they just tie him up they with a bunch up with of belts. belts. And just leave him on a fucking bed. <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? I don't want you to hurt yourself. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> what are you doing? Or leave him on a uh, on one of the seats. Um, but then, so him and 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 Cristiano Logan go to put this this virus in the in yeah. the fucking plane, and they they go down into like the hatch underneath the the front of the cockpit or whatever mm -hmm. where they have a port. And I love this. Brinks, he's like, all right, I got to plug my computer in so I can give it the virus. He's like, there's an aux one and an aux two, and he's like, which one do I use? And she's like, I'm a fucking st I don't know. There are two, which is the main. Oh. Well, how should I know? I'm not an engineer. How would I know? And he's like, look at the thing and tell me. Well, and she's like, you, he's also like, which one of these goes to the main one? Yeah. He's like, they're auxiliary for a reason. They're yeah. not the main one. Well, it, it, it's like, it's aux one and aux two. They would both go to the same thing, would they not? Mm -hmm. And then, and also, if you were going to assume which one was maybe the main one, maybe well, aux one. one? Yeah. And if it went to two separate things, you would have aux one for this thing. Yeah. And aux one for... For, for this, this thing. thing. He walks one and two, they go to the same thing. It doesn't make any sense. And she's like, uh, I don't know, ox one, I guess. And then she's last second, she's like, no, ox two. Right, use the one on the right. And he plugs into that and he's like, ooh, it worked. Got it. I'm like, I think both of them would have worked. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so stupid. <laughs> Uh, but he gets the virus and it like he really doesn't like it doesn't, it doesn't do, anything. do anything well because kane explains he's like <laughs> i wrote that virus when you were still in diapers i wrote the goddamn brethren virus when you were still in diapers disappointed in you neil you're gonna have to do a little better than that like so apparently he created this virus so he'd like 
gets rid of it immediately and it's okay. like fuck it. And then he's like, I gotta teach you all a little lesson. Nose dime! I'm gonna have to teach you all a lesson. I'm sorry. Yeah. And he nose dives the plane. And I have to explain this too, and I could be wrong. I don't know a lot about planes. But as they're diving, uh, I think it's Neil or somebody yells, too many G's. Yeah. It's too many G's. The plane can't take it. And then after, then the guy pulls him out of the dive. It's amazing. The limits. And they start banking and going back up. And they all seem fine at that point. And now I could be wrong. But during the dive, you're experiencing negative Gs, and yeah. you would only experience too many Gs at the bottom coming out yes, of it. Yes. And he says that before they hit, and I was like, I I, I know very little, That's and I knew dumb. that. And also, here's the other thing: you pull off a maneuver like that in one of those big ass planes, those wings are just gonna go boop and gone. <laughs> oh, you! I think they could get pretty. Again, I have think, you ever seen a plane's wings in normal flight, like a big plane? Oh yeah, they move they're like just, crazy. They're, yeah, they're yeah, just, they move like fucking crazy. But I think. They, they probably pull it off i think that it's not that crazy of a dive but it, again it just drove me fucking insane that he wouldn't say he would said too many g's when it wouldn't be too many g's he said it just when they uh, okay great okay great logic in this movie great yeah Oh, this is where we do find out that he's going to crash him into a nuclear reactor. Yes. They explain yeah. that. <laughs> no, no, I do want to know. Where are we going? Calvert Cliffs, Maryland. Well, what's there? The largest nuclear reactor on the East Coast. Brian, where, where's the most dangerous part of a nuclear reactor? I, I would assume the reactor part. Okay. Like what, what, is, uh, what, what is not the core? The, the the towers yeah the coolant towers well they're over the core <laughs> i guess so i think i also have no idea if crashing a plane into a nuclear reactor would actually do much it, i mean it, it wouldn't be good no i would assume but i don't know if you would get like a nuclear bot like i would i would think once the feed stops to the core that it would just be like right, i guess i'm just radioactive and done <laughs> well i would assume that there's all kinds of and again i could be wrong about all this and we know or, or they would drown. They would drown it. <laughs> or yeah, like it would. It's especially because they would know. They know what the target is. Mm -hmm. They could shut the reactor down, uh, right? I'm sure it takes a while. Yeah, I'm but not I sure think, how long it would take. I don't think it takes that long. I think nuclear is pretty quick. Re I mean, relatively speaking. Yeah. I don't know. I uh, fuck if I know. I know we're, we're scientists. <laughs> <laughs> I know it wouldn't be good, but I also would assume that after things like Three Mile Island and stuff, that the the place where the reactor it was would be a very secure oh, place. Oh, yeah, way way below ground. Like too. below ground to the point where yeah, where a plane hitting it probably wouldn't be that. But I don't know. smart people very <laughs> incredibly smart and know all kinds of things about this kind of stuff um uh, i love too. did you know I, his name's rudy in this movie but i couldn't get over how much his little uh neil's friend who works at the faa the yes. blonde guy looks like neil patrick harris <laughs> yes 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 that, that guy that guy has been in a lot of stuff has he, he? Uh, he's you would uh, I look. I looked up some of the stuff, like some of the, like House. He was in like oh, like, like a bunch like of TV a, shows yeah, and stuff, stuff like that. So he, he's like a bit guy. He does like you know, comes yeah, in, does be. So he's been on a bunch of stuff, but nothing like super like concrete. Yeah, but there's a really terrible eighty yard line when the doctor gets back to his family. The little boy is like, "I'm so glad you're back, Dad." And it's the most ADR, obvious, yeah. terrible ADR. Oh, it's so fucking bad. Papa is gonna stay right here. Yeah. So glad you're back, Dad. So glad you're back, Dad. Also, they never explain this, Kyle. Why is Kane wearing a priest collar the whole fucking movie? Or like a... He's not a collar, but he's wearing like the... Like a shawl type thing? Like the, the little like around the neck that goes down thing. Or like the thing you wear when you graduate, you know? Like if you have like graduate with honors, the little... Like I don't know what it is, but he's wearing it the whole fucking time. Now they they figure out that Neil Patrick Harris, again, cross-references the list of who worked at the factory or whatever. Mm -hmm. They figure out where he is and they find his address and they go to fucking raid his house. 
By the way, they go, they went to his house, which is completely boarded up and stuff. And it's like, you know, this guy. Why did I don't know why they? Why did you think you were gonna? Night? Yeah, again, this is the classic thing in like every one of these movies where like the the FBI agents go and they're like, no, don't see. You know, he's he can't call. He, like uh, fucking Neil's trying to call him and be like, get him out of there, get him out of there, and he he gets his help. Get him out of there. Yeah. Get him out of there. <laughs> he, he gets his phone hacked so he can't talk to him or whatever. Um, and then uh, they just all get blown up. Welcome to my world, motherfucker. <laughs> Yeah. And I love, I love too, all of the, they're like really bad FBI costumes. They have like round, like almost like motorcycle helmet, yeah. like helmets. They look so stupid. And like everything he did had to been planned perfectly because there's one guy who was like, all right, just get a little bit closer to that trash can yeah. and boom. Yeah. <laughs> Random trash cans have bombs in them. Great. And then Neil's the last one, or not Neil. Rudy. Um, Rudy's the last one alive and he tries to drive away. And I don't know why he needed to be there. I don't know. Either. But sure, he's there, and then he drives over a bomb that was just in the middle of the street and <laughs> fucking explodes. <laughs> uh, and also, during this little scene, he we see him blowing up the bombs by hitting the button on the joystick that is what's controlling the plane. Why are those things both on the same joystick? That seems like he might have accidentally bumped yeah. that while... Whatever. If you had to switch it over, like uh, how you do with some computers. Yeah. It's like, oh, fuck, wrong control. Wrong, wrong plane. Plane. <laughs> he's trying, he's <laughs> trying to fly the plane and he accidentally blows his house up like 10 minutes before the cops get there. He's like, fuck. Welcome to my world, motherfucker. Oh, and this is the moment. This is the great moment now. Yeah. Where so our, cra our guy who's like super, super, super like freaking out. Freaking out. He's gotten he out gets, of his He gets out of the belt, yeah. And, and he tries to open the door. He's like, I gotta get out of here. Dude, you're at 32,000 feet. Where the hell are you gonna go? Down. Kyle is gonna go yeah. fucking down. <laughs> but but he's, he's trying to open the door. People are getting on him. He, apparently, Neil's... Uh, Neil's uh, biggest weakness in this this movie is uh, back elbows. Yeah, he gets hit by the couple of those, and he's like, "Oh, oh no!" no, no. Oh, he he tries to open it, and then the co-pilot grabs him, and then he gets it open, and they both get sucked, sucked out of the. <laughs> So now we have no pilots that can function on the plane because our yeah. co-pilot got sucked out and there's not a word that, spoken about his death. That like, shot of them falling the is The green screen of them falling is fucking amazing. It's so good. Uh, and then Christina Loken gets sucked out, but she has fingers of fucking steel yeah. and grabs the edge of the door and it's like, ah! <laughs> And, and he's able to save her, and then he gets the door on and shoves it back in the hole. I am convinced, in addition to you not being able to hold on to that, uh, you would also probably freeze pretty quickly, or at uh, least... No, I, I don't think... It, it's cold, but I, you wouldn't freeze in seconds, like, you know. Well, I take the speed into account, too. Like, the wind the wind chill yeah. you're dealing with. I think more likely she just wouldn't have been able to hold on. <laughs> no. She would have been very cold Whee! and yeah, holding on by, yeah. Anyways, but he's able to get her back in and shut the door, but they depressurize. So they're all like running out of oxygen, um, which I guess makes sense. Uh, although at some point they're going to get low enough that it won't matter. Yeah. Cause they are talking about we're running out of oxygen. It's like, well, once you're under like 10,000 feet, it doesn't fucking matter. Whatever. Sure. Please keep it on, please. Too so bad. Oh. Keep it on. Come on. Keep it on. Sure's oh. first. Sure's first. Oh. Sure's first. Sure. They, they sent F-15s after them. Yeah. They have F-15s flying after them because they're going to fucking shoot them down because they know they're going to crash into a goddamn nuclear power plant and potentially, like, kill half the eastern seaboard or whatever. <laughs> so they're like, well, we're going to shoot them down. And the guy's like, you got to give them more time. Give Neil a chance to regain control. I mean, I'm like, look, man, I get what you're saying, but also, no, you don't. I feel like mm. in this situation, if they're going to crash into a nuclear power plant and it's literally going to kill millions of people no. on the East Coast. You sorry, just, Neil. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. You're shooting that plane down. Why don't you just tell me the right answer? Well, that's what's so great about the trolley problem is that there is no right answer. Uh. This is why everyone hates moral philosophy professors. But he, he's able to get under the thing again and he's able to 
shut off the main control and then that's his last plan is we're going to yeah. shut off the the, con- the control line so that that way we can and then restart it and that will allow us to manually control the plane yeah and so now we have uh i got before that happens i gotta talk about just one line the the other uh, the other air stewardess or whatever um when they see the F-15s outside, she comes running up and she goes, Josie, Neil, there are two F-16s flying with us. Is that good or bad? They could be here to help us, right? There's that two F-15s outside. They could be here to help us, right? Uh, <laughs> and I was like, well, lady, what the fuck are they going to do to help you? <laughs> like, what? You think they're going to, like, come underneath well, you and hold you up? Like, they, what they, the they can help them get to the ground very <laughs> Real quickly. Fast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like, they could be here to help us. How? <laughs> think through that for half a second. I know you're in, like, a fucking panicking and shit. But, oh, uh, yeah, how are they going to um, help what, you? What was the actress name again? Chris, is it? Christ- it's Christana is how Christana, it's spelled, but okay. I don't know if it's Christy. I always think it's like Christiana, even though there's no I. I don't know. Well, anyway, she's in, she's like basically like the ca- the captain's like you need to take control of the plane, and so they yeah. restart the engines. Yeah, uh, and there's a big fun monologue which makes no sense where the guy he's also where he reveals that he's like scarred and burned yeah. and shit um but also he's like going through this thing. He's like I'm having second thoughts. I don't know how I'm feeling about this whole thing. I don't know. I'm c- I don't know if what I'm doing is right. I can't stop seeing the screaming faces melting. I'm kind of not sure about it anymore. And then at the end, he goes, ah, I'm just fucking with you. Hey, Neil. I'm just fucking with you. <laughs> <laughs> and they're still talking while it's nose diving. And, the, and this is where he's trying to cut wires. And at the last second, Neil's like, hey, Kane, I just want you to know something. I'm just fucking with you. And then cuts the wire. Hey, Kane. <laughs> yeah. I'm just fucking with you. But he says I'm just fucking with you to Kane, but that Kane was intent was actively yeah, he like, wasn't he wasn't putting on but yeah, Neil wasn't putting on a show or Neil anything. wasn't putting on a show. He was just sitting there talking to him. Hey Kane. <laughs> yeah. I'm just fucking with you. You can't just write one liners that don't mean anything, bad movies. They do it all the time though. Game over. Guess what? Overtime. Oh, and then right after he does that, uh, and then Kane realizes he lost control of the plane, we get a great, no! (laughs) No! No! Angry uh, fists to the sky, no. But they're able to restart the engines and get get it under manual control. Yes, but they're still nosediving at the power plant. Yeah. And this, he has talked, uh, also we've got to mention, Neil has talked to the F-15 pilots and is like, you got to give us more time. We can get back control of the plane or whatever. And now this is infuriating, Kyle. So the whole thing was that they originally said we're going to, if when they cross a certain longitude, we're going to fucking shoot them and blow them up so that they don't blow up the nuclear power plant. Once they reach 77 degrees longitude, I have got to take them down. Now they are nose diving directly at the power plant. The F-15s are behind them. And one of the F-15 pilots starts counting down from 10. Launch on my command, Razor, in You're 10, not going to make it. Nine. No. Eight. And he's like, we're going to shoot him on zero. But then the moment that he hits zero on his countdown, they, they, they're, they're already, already past yeah. the nuclear. Yeah. Yeah. They would have already hit it. Yeah. Yo, what, why would you? Because you can't shoot your. What are you gonna shoot your count- missiles at the power plant? You gotta help them out a little. <laughs> what the fuck? But apparently that's where that's where. Knocked <laughs> <laughs> knock some stuff down. It's okay. <laughs> Did you kill Baby Yoda? That's not Baby. Oh no, Yoda. normal Yoda. That's regular Yoda. Yeah. <laughs> This reactor is where Kane is. That's where he's controlling everything. Oh, yeah. Right we actually found he's out. Gonna he's going to suicide like, blow up himself. Yeah, because he's like, whatever. Um, how would that work? Because, like, what's the definition of that? Because, like, you would suicide bomb yourself, but you're, like, you're not in control of the plane. I mean, he you is are in control, control of the plane. But you're not on the plane. It's still the same thing. It'd be like flying an object into yourself. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. Um, 
But they're, now they have to try to land. In Baltimore International. At Baltimore International with no, like, assistant controls from the plane. Because, yeah. again, all the, like, autopilot and stuff is turned off. Um, and they have to be talked through it by the paralyzed pilot sitting behind yeah. them. Um, and I love, too, that <laughs> there's one shot of, like, when the other stewardess just closing the overhead compartments. And I was like, got to make sure you go through that checklist still, even though yeah. the plane is, like, falling apart. <laughs> She's like, we don't want anything falling on anybody's head. <laughs> Uh, I was really hoping too at this moment that they would just crash and die. <laughs> like, they would like go back to land and they're like, it's a one in a thousand shot. Or it's going to be impossible to land, but we can do it. And then it just cuts and it's like. <laughs> the fuel runs out and the, the, the fucking flaps yeah. won't go down right so that they have to. So they're, they're coming down with like half way the too much speed. acceleration or something. Yeah, they're coming down with way too much speed. And the landing gear stuck. Or something. No, it comes down. I think well, the no, flaps no. are stuck. No, the landing gear, one, like one of the landing gear things, doesn't come oh, down. Doesn't. So they, they have to, they belly skim it the entire way. Well, I thought that was just because they they just hit too hard and like just broke the landing gear. But whatever, they they do get down. Uh, even though they're going way too fast, they hit and they skid across this entire, and we get a beautiful miniature shot. Yes. <laughs> And there's one point where they hit a tower and it just goes like boing. <laughs> Yeah. And they start sliding and, and also this whole I forgot to mention this. The whole time they're landing, this pilot is talking them through it is a terrible coach. Can't get enough leverage. For Christ's sake, you're not gonna get any leverage if you're splattered all over the windshield. Control the levers as best you can. He's like, no, you fucking idiots, do this! And they're like, we don't know what we're doing! Use the rudder to line us up at the runways. You swerve and we're history. Uh, let go of the throttle. Doesn't matter anymore. Just use the rudder. And for God's sake, keep us level. And he's like yelling at them and they're like, we don't, we're, I'm a You gotta maintain control. What control? Yeah, he goes, he yells, he yells, hold it steady as they're skidding across the pavement. Hold it steady, dude. Hold it steady. Sideways. Sideways. And he literally yells back at him, hold what steady? <laughs> Fucking amazing. Uh, and then it finally skids to a stop and uh, everybody cheers. And I was really hoping that was when it was going to explode. <laughs> I'm like, oh yay! No, we got to go stupid though for the Indian. And fasten your seatbelt and slowly and calmly follow me. Now we got to do the classic, like you think it's over, but it's not. Um, yep. They get off and we wrap up everybody's little storyline in like the right outside the plane. Where, like, mm. It's like everybody's little uh, yeah, character has, like, arc. gets broken ankle or something. Yeah, something's broken. An arm but or she ankle. But she has to get in, into a, an ambulance. ambulance. Yeah. And she's driving off. But guess who is the driver? Oh, my God. It's, it's Kane. Kane. Go. That was your flight. Adios, Kimo Simon. No, Kate! It's Kate! <laughs> Who is able to not only uh, procure this ambulance, get to that location. Get from the, the power plant to the airport. He's also able to set up his entire hacking system in this. In the car, so that he can now drive a plane out of a hangar. It's Kate! <laughs> It's so stupid. I love it. But uh, Neil realizes something's up, gets on a motorcycle, and chases down this this ambulance. And uh, th this is where he is. He gets on, right? Yeah. And this yeah, is where he's subject to it. his one weakness again because he all, gets elbowed in the face. All Kane does is like, <laughs> and he's like, ah, fuck. <laughs> This shit's going crazy, and then the ambulance flips. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it crashes, and our our guys are able to get out at the last second as the plane <laughs> that our guy remote controlled yeah. comes careening through and hits his yeah, ambulance. Yeah, gets like, caught in a wheel and is pulling the whole thing. Go, go, go! Into the fucking terminal, which they did say that they evacuated. Yes. So the terminal was the, empty. The miniature of Baltimore <laughs> International Terminal is great. And then it fucking explodes. It 
it, can you imagine if you had a flight out of Baltimore that day or the, or the next day? Yeah. Where they're like, sorry, we we, we just have a tent set up in the yeah. field. <laughs> sorry, the terminal's just gone. It fucking exploded. So uh, we're having people uh, just kind of wait in this big. Uh, we rented one of those tents for like a wedding. Just kind of go stand out there. <laughs> And then they're, but then they're like standing there watching him burn and die in the in the exploded terminal, yeah, yeah. and they're like, "We got to get you to the hospital, but first we got to get you to the bone zone." Oh, <laughs> they they're together now, even though that was not remotely yep. like established over the course of the movie. Um, but they talk about how they should take a nice, relaxing train trip together. I was thinking maybe we could take the train once the fireworks over the capital. Some yeah. Yeah, I'd like that. Trains are good. Because they like trains. And I was like, I need a sequel where they're on the train. Uh, I believe that was called Unstoppable. Oh, with, yeah. Uh, with, was it John Travolta? Was it John Travolta? I think, oh, no. Yeah, was it? I think it was John Travolta. Or No, no, uh, no, not that one. I'm thinking of a completely, not Unstoppable. Um, that was, with, I think, with Bruce Willis. No, it's uh, the the freaking subway in New York. Parenheim or something like that. No well, anyways, that one's where John Travolta is the bad guy, and they take control of a subway oh. train. Oh, is it the is it the um the taking of Pelham one? Yeah, that's it. That's yeah. it. That's it. That's it. Yeah, that's where John Travolta is the bad guy who takes control of a subway and he's driving. Yeah, the Unstoppable is either no Unbreakable is Bruce Willis. <laughs> Unstoppable what, what is, is it Chris Pine? I think that is Chris Pine and John Travolta. I think that's what that is. Uh, yeah, Chris Pine and somebody. I think. Out here, you get killed. Married. Sort of. It's a long story. How about you? You married? Got two beautiful daughters. Who fucking cares? Anyways, <laughs> that's, that's the end of the movie. It's not an unoriginal film. I'll put it that. Or it's, not a, it's not an original film idea. Uh, we, I we still would love to see a sequel. Uh, that's not true. I wouldn't. Um, <laughs> Kyle, this movie's. I would say bad, bad. Yeah. Probably. I don't know. It's if we could just stuff. have the scene where the guy gets. Sucked out of the yeah. airplane over yeah. and over. Yeah. <laughs> Which that was one of the scenes I saw in the trailer that made me want to watch this movie. Was that and like they literally the the, the trailer has some of the best moments because it's all like shit exploding and people getting sucked out of planes and like the FBI like guys and I was like this looks terrible uh, and then the rest of it's just eh, whatever it's it's not the worst so, thing in the world but bad bad I would say bad bad yeah. though. I don't think it has enough good moments to make up for um, it just being kind of boring for parts of it. I don't know. Anyways, that's going to do it for this. Uh, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going good, bad, Kyle. I changed Whoa. my vote. You pulled an audible Overruled. on me. Overrule. Audible. Overrule. I, I, I don't still don't watch it, but... <laughs> <laughs> As always, you can support us on Patreon, patreon.com slash JBRBB. Um, uh, speaking of, we will have just, uh, right after this, we're recording a huge Q&A session um, with, uh, we, where patrons ask us a bunch of questions, and then we will be posting that on our Patreon feed for anybody who supports us on Patreon. Uh, so if you want to hear us answer questions about how this show started, why, I mean, a million, I don't I haven't yes. looked at the questions yet to see what they all are, but pretty much anything and everything people could want us to talk about, we will talk about. How Kyle knows everything about everything. Yes, how Kyle knows so much about uh, a aviation uh, and wireless and technology. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, uh, yeah, we can go into all that stuff in detail, and you can get access to that at our Patreon, patreon.com slash GBRBB. Uh, also, you can support us by buying our merch on Tee Public. You can get this shirt, you can get what? that shirt, you can get other stuff, pillows. Uh, there's a pillow down there, Kyle, somewhere. Pillows like that. I can't, I can't grab it. There you go. There pillows you. like that. Yay! Or masks or whatever uh, mugs all that good stuff um and all of that supports the channel in some small way so it's a very puff, fluffy pillow yeah, it is very nice. it's a nice pillow and it's not like it's not like a shitty decal this is like no it's like, like printed it's like screen yeah. printed on there um and it uh or i don't even know if it's no it's not screen printed it's actual fabric yeah it's like dyed or i don't know how it works but um yeah. it's very nice and you can tell it actually unzips and you can take it off and uh wash it so nice. it's, a, it's a very quality pillow if you want a good, bad, bad pillow High quality stuff. Uh, I got a podcast called This Film is Over. We're talking about movies that are based on books. When this episode is out, I don't actually fucking know because we're too far ahead. Um, but you can go check it out and see what we're talking about. Uh, also, Twitch, occasionally yes. twitch.tv. GB or BB Brian slash GB or BB underscore Kyle. Kyle's your movie out? Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah, you can go watch uh, Interview Monsters and Bigfoot available uh, on the link in the description below. 
There you as go. As well as we know, at least Amazon. That's yeah. where, yeah. Amazon. Sweet. And that's going to do it for this episode. Until next time, keep watching movies. It's kind of yes and no for Air Panic. Hackers. 